Just start fencing. I know of nothing that will make grass grow and country heal like a fence will, so long as you make sure that the cattle are only in that fence for a little bit of the time. And from what Dad told us in 1946 when he came here, that this was all clay pen. It, it did grow a little bit of sedge and, and um, gidgy stuff in the wet, but all of this was pretty much bare ground, bare white, hot ground. The paddock we're standing in, it was 60 square miles. Well, since uh, about 2000, we've slowly split it up. Um, and this one's now, I think, around about 7,000 acres. This part was ripped but never seeded. We put a three-wire electric fence around, and it's had two grazing since then. And this year, it's had a, a full wet season spell. So there's Eurocloa, there's buffalo grass, there's um, Desert Mitchell, never fail. There's um, Seca, there's water grass, there's all kinds of stuff. And it takes a little bit of a thinking, you know, the cattle don't matter, the grass matters. The grass program supports graziers who are interested in, say, uh, installing infrastructure to um, affect management changes that will help their land rest and recover. The action plan that we create through the grass program uh, helps graziers meet their minimum standards for compliance under the reef regulations. So NQ Dry Tropics, um, they've been, been the, the grandmother of a lot of good things. We've done some work with Chirrup, based in Emerald, and that's been funding from NQ Dry Tropics, and that was fencing. Also, the grass project. So able to make a record of the fact that we do know there are problem areas and what we're doing about it. So that we've got a record that hopefully we're a good corporate citizen. It's always been everyone else's fault. You know, like we'd, we'd build our numbers up and then, the, then it wouldn't rain and the market was no good. And so it was always someone else's fault. And then one, one day, we realised that like all the cows that we carted water to and that died in 15, that was my fault because I could have sold them. And it would have been way better off. If, you, if you're working on it earlier, if you're making that, you know, the, the grazing days less earlier in the year, you're stockpiling grass right through. Your grass is the important thing. If you look after the, the soil, the soil will look after the grass and the grass will look after everything else. When we started, we didn't know if we'd get a result. Now we know we're going to get a result. We don't know how much of a result we're going to get. And then you get a year like we've had, and that puts everything like 10 years ahead. We've got no clue what we can run now. We've got perennials that are now established in areas where there was nothing. And so I'd say conservatively this year, we've doubled our carrying capacity. Um, long term, I don't know what we've done to it, but yeah, definitely way more. We've got a plan. And so, you know, if you've got a plan, you sleep a lot better. Over a 10 year period of time, our turnover, way, way higher, stress level way down. Only thing I know for a certainty is that what we're doing today isn't what we'll be doing in 10 years, because we're gonna learn more.